At its most basic, a chemise is a tunic like garment, one with some bifurcated garment, such as a salva, hence the popular phrase salva chemise. It's typically associated with places like India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. Hi, it's Pasta Isha. I thought I'd show you an example of how cool Asian garments tend to be with alterations. These bottoms aren't salva, they look more like churidar, which is skinnier, but they could also just be generic trousers. Also, sorry about pronunciation, I've got a weird British Spanish kind of twang to these words. Anyway, as you can see by the pattern, there's a seam where I can easily shorten them, which I'll do now. I've somehow lost both my own pickers though, so I'm going to shred some seams like a creature and that's far too embarrassing for the internet, so I'll skip how I got there. Feel free to guess in the comments how I managed it. So the origins of the kameez is likely from somewhere in the Arabic world and the Islamic community, especially since kameez is an Arabic word. In Hindi, we often use kurti or kurta as they've both kind of become the same garment in the modern world. You'll probably come across different spellings of kameez in English letters, which honestly reminds you of the like 50 million different ways you can spell my name. I found references to the Salva Kameez, among other Islamic garments, as being likely introduced to India in the 11th century, but any primary images I could find were from Mughal court dress in the 16th century, and the influences from places like Turkey and Persia. If we look at some period art of women in Mughal court dress, it looks similar to the Salva Kameez of today. The style looks a bit more like Anarkali which is a chemise with an A-line or full skirt. I've heard it referred to as a frock style. Legend goes, a Mughal court prince called Salim or Jahangir was kind of into a court dancer known as Anarkali, and she wore this style of dress. Although the chemise seems to be gaining popularity, traditional Indian draped garments didn't completely go away, and the two aesthetics just kind of coexisted together, as the sari is still THE Indian garment, despite the popularity of the kameez. Also, there's this piece labelled as a kurti from the Museum of New Delhi dated to the 19th century. Looking at 20th century examples, I could easily spot garments that feature the kameez and wouldn't look out of place today, as the general silhouettes haven't really changed. Even though Britain did the big colonisation, traditional garments which now include the kameez are still around, which is nice because unfortunately I can't say the same for the culture of my ancestors. <laughs> Thank you.
Here is another costume from Uttar Pradesh. The tight trousers are a characteristic feature of this costume. Her orni or veil is of brocaded silk. in northern India has a different dress again. The trousers called the salwar are fashion full and are heavily embossed with gold embroidery. Her gold braided shirt is as distinctive as the hand ornament combining both bracelets and rings. Many young girls wear this attractive outfit in a simplified form. The Kameez continues to change today, adapting to the tastes of the time while still having all the previous styles available to us. Not only are they worn with traditional bottoms like salva, but also western things like jeans. I think it's real cool how this garment has just stuck around for centuries and can be reinvented constantly for a modern context. So now, I'm going to make one. So, I found this salva kameez set in the charity shop. Um, this is an unstitched set, so you can get the fabric you need to make it, but it's it's just the fabric, so you, you're going to have to sell it yourself. And it's a three-piece set, so we've got the kameez, we've got the salva, and you've got the dupatta, which is like a scarf thing. Yeah. So we're going to stitch it and make it. Yeah. So, guess what turned out to not be colour fast? Um, well, I've still got to wash it anyway, so we'll just see what happens. This fabric creased a lot, so it's likely cotton or polycotton as I guessed. I ironed it, but I'm using a basic domestic iron, so it won't be amazing. I'm going to use a mix of my way of sewing and some traditional methods, but what I'm doing isn't the way to do it. To be honest, I'm going in just using my existing sewing skill. One main thing about Asian style sewing is typically no paper patterns. We take our measurements and just draw and cut directly onto the fabric each time. Which is scary, I know. I love using paper patterns, but let's give it a try. The front is clear due to the pattern and the back is the plain side. I fold my fabric into four and use my pattern blocks to help me. I outline the general shape, then mark the bust line, waistline and hip line.
I then extend the line down the fabric and cut. I was nervous about this, so I cut away before the chalk lines. This way we cut our front and back at once. I then deepen the neckline of the front and use the scraps to make sleeves. Using my arm to shoulder measurement and the bodice block to form the top of the sleeve. I'll sew the sleeves together in the middle and finish the fabric edges with some sort of folded over hem I suppose. Whatever keeps the raw edges hidden.
make the neckline a little prettier, I create a facing by tracing the neckline with the fabric scraps. I then sew right sides together, my back and front piece following my chalk lines. I marked and sewed in some darts with the side seams and did a fit test. I'm going to deepen the neckline at the front and take it in at the waist again. I end up adding bust darts as well.
Mrs. Grant and her timbre frame were not without their use. It was all in harmony. And as everything will turn to account when love is once set going, even the sandwich tray and Dr. Grant doing the honours of it were worth looking at. Without studying the business, however, or knowing what he was about, Edmund was beginning at the end of a week of such intercourse to be a good deal in love. And to the credit of the lady, it may be added, that without his being a man of the world or an elder brother, without any of the arts of flattery or the gaieties of small talk, he began to be agreeable to her. She felt it to be so, though she had not foreseen and could hardly understand it, for he was not pleasant by any common rule. He talked no nonsense, he paid no compliments, his opinions were um, excluded the possibility of much prospect from any of the rooms, and while Fanny and some of the others were attending Mrs. Rushworth, Henry Crawford was looking grey. For the trousers, I did the same, but the fabric wasn't cut perpendicular for some reason, so it messed up my cutting. But I did the four folds and took my measurements to create trousers in the style of the diagrams of the traditional salver. I then sew the edges up and add elastic to the waist because it's modern times and I prefer this to drill string.
My dodgy cutting means I end up piecing together fabric in one of the legs and I overall felt iffy about them, but not every project is successful. And you're done! It seems alright! I did a little ballet test on the trousers and yes, they were a little too tight, but the sleeves are great, especially since I used fabric scraps for that. I end up messing around. I didn't stretch beforehand so I look a bit odd, but I guess this channel is sensible chaos. Using the god tier just draw and cut method was fun, but also the reason I think the standard is a bit off. But sucking at something is the first step to being good at something. I hope you enjoyed the chaos, let me know if you ever make a chemise, and have a lovely rest of the day. Okay, bye.